Good evening and beyond venu, my fond fair Rouge Raiders. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to bring you. <laughs> oh, come on now, you really didn't think I was gonna do that to you now, did ya? Good evening and beyond venu, my fond fair Rouge Raiders. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to bring you. Well, part two. Of what if he say was the reincarnation of the Dovakin? As standard things go, viewer discretion is advised. I am not responsible if you do not enjoy this, for I am doing this primarily out of my own sensibilities and from a combined headspace between me and a fan. If you do not enjoy this, I have other content, and if you do not enjoy those, you can go to another channel. I do not mind. At the same point in time, if you do enjoy these, I humbly thank you for doing so, and I am more than grateful to have you here. And also, <laughs> please be on the lookout for gore and possibly other things, because this is not going to be a PG show. <clears throat> now, let's get back to where we were. Wait, 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 wait. Heart attack? I thought you were killed by the Thalmor. The Thalmor? How could the Thalmor kill me? They just send a bunch of Judiciars after me. And even then, those guys weren't that big of a pain in the butt. A simple ward, a few lightning spells, a few fire, and a few beheadings later, and they're just looting a box. Wait, what? What do you mean, looting a box? Oh, I take all their armor and sell it. You'd leave them naked and naked and uh, stranded. Well, granted, they'd be, their bodies would be naked, but <laughs> they weren't alive to be worried about it. You would, hey, they're, oh, hey, elven armor sold for a darn good bit and was light and easy to carry. Combine that with the sheer fact that I didn't like them? <laughs> Why wouldn't I sell it? Uh, but in the history I read, they poisoned you. Poisoned me? Uh, unless they have some type of poison that could make me feel like it just bring on a heart attack all of a sudden. Yeah, no. Not to mention, I prepped my own food. <laughs> Bit of a paranoid. I either went to taverns and bought stuff, which most of the taverns I went to hated the Thalmor and cooked their food in-house, wouldn't let anyone get close to it, or I made it myself. Or my wife made it. Yeah, not enough room for them to be able to do that. Not to mention, they never could pin me down long enough to try and poison me. At least until it was too late for them to even have a hold, really. I... I see. So, what happened? How did you get a heart attack? Well, Rius, uh... <clears throat> The main reason I got one is because of the lifestyle I lived for over two and a half years. What? What do you mean? Well, I was a simple guy. I mean, I may have had the soul of a dragon, but I was still human. I was still a living, breathing person. Which meant... That if you combine the stress of having to save the world on not on... Three different occasions from three different jackasses. Granted, one of those jackasses was a dragon and technically had a good point, but the other two were just complete jackasses. Then, yeah, you kind of get a bit of a chip on your shoulder. And let's not even begin to describe how <laughs> all the other bull. What do you mean? Oh, y'all gonna want to pull up a chair. Or just sit on the lap. I don't mind either or. Um, uh, I got another leg free. And Nakano ain't holding up that one. I mean, anyone who wants to, bloop. And, uh, with that... 
But let's just say a certain blonde-haired, innocent girl decides to sit down on the other knee. <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Mm, nice. Anyways, as I was saying, as now some of them are a little bit miffed and the others are just wanting to hear this story. Uh, for over two and a half years, I basically <laughs> lived the worst health the worst life imaginable what do you mean i barely slept i ate but whenever i ate it was something that was meant to just get me from point a to b heck i even gave it i even ate food that were in barrows barrows i ate food that was found in barrows you ate, uh, wait, barrows. <sighs> Grave food. Food that was in graves. Stuff that was so high, either highly preserved or just plain old, you know, not fresh, to put it in the simplest of terms. Ew. Why would you do that? Desperation. Desperation. Yeah, you'd be surprised how desperate you can be whenever you don't whenever you don't pack properly. Combine that oh, with my usual diet when I wasn't in a barrow. Your usual diet. <clears throat> Heavy meats, cheeses, beer, several different types of booze, wine. And, uh, very heavy starch food. And very heavy amounts of starch. Honestly, the only type of fruits I liked were Jazz Bay grapes. And even then, eh, well then again, juniper berries and, uh, snow berries were always good. But, for the most part, Jazz Bay grapes, granted you couldn't find them bastards much anywhere, had to start growing them myself. But, yeah. It was just a pain. A bigger pain than it was worth 90% of the time. So I just ate tavern food for the most part. And it was good, but, again, not very healthy for you. Yeah, why didn't you try eating healthier? I did later, but for the moment, it wasn't really much of a choice. It was, you could eat healthy and take more time, or go to a tavern, get some, spend some money on some sweet rolls, honey nut treats, a big chunk of venison, leg lamb roast, and booze, and be on your way in the morning. Which I did. To be fair, though... Oh, oh, insomnia, my old friend. Insomnia? Well, back then I didn't call it that. Back then it was just work. Work? Oh, yeah, I think the longest I ever went was an entire month without sleep. Just constantly swinging, going from dungeon, fight, dungeon, fight, dungeon, fight, crawl, fight, fight, fall, fall, dragon, giant, shit, damn, boom, bam, bing, boom. Yeah, it was, it, it kind of came a blur after like the first three days, and then I just wound up going later. Like, huh? My arms kind of fucked up, and I'm walking with a limp. Hmm. There's a tavern nearby. I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah. Went there, paid for a room, and passed out. The only time I woke up was to pay for a, was to, because the owner wanted me to, and because I had to pay for another 24 hours. So I did that and passed out for like, I think for like five days straight. I just repeated that process of eat, sleep, eat, sleep. Felt good enough to where I went out for another week, and came across another poor tavern. Leaf. I swear I gave that guy around, what, at least a thousand, considering all the food I bought and everything. Like, hey. Yeah, it was... <laughs> and that's not even forget to mention the sheer amount of strain that was put on my internals. 
potions are not the best thing for you. I mean, yeah, they they do heal you and everything, but they do that by kicking your well, they do that by kicking your body into overdrive. You feel all warm and tingly, and then you realize it's technically increasing your body's natural healing rate. And that's for the regeneration one. Let's not even forget the ones that instantly mend you up. Yeah, they don't replace the blood you lost. They just seal up the gaps. <laughs> Oof. It's nice and warm and tingly, but I tell you what, it's not healthy. Especially considering the shit you were used to making them. Blister wart mushrooms with wheat and other odds and ends for just for a simple health potion. You know how bad that stuff is for you, blister wart? <laughs> Like, you can use that to dis- no, like, hey. You can use that to make someone exhausted if you do it correctly, but... For- for healing. Yeesh. It's not fun. Uh, uh, uh-huh. And let's not even forget about the- about fortification of your magic, your- <laughs> Or as we called it back in Skyrim, magica. Magica? Magica, yes. We called it Magica. It made more sense back then. A lot of things made more sense back then. But, mm, I get to feel nice and warm right now, so I'm not complaining. As he kind of pulls the two girls sitting on his lap a little bit closer. <laughs> oh, calm down. Y'all know you like it. Anyways, back to what I was stating. Yeah! <clears throat> things just got more and more downhill as time went on after dra not to mention <laughs> the how to enchant things wait how did y'all enchant things <laughs> probably nowhere near as convoluted as y'all enchant things but ours was much more dangerous because in Skyrim everything had to be done quickly <laughs> We couldn't afford to sit around and wait. So we trapped souls. Wait, what? Oh yeah, we, we trapped souls of living entities inside of gems and then used those gems to enchant and create other bullshittery. I'm sorry, you're telling me that you trapped... Well, we didn't trap people. Well, most of the time we didn't trap people. I didn't trap people unless it was really necessary. And I felt like, hmm, I don't know if they're going to be sent to a... Heaven or hell, but I'd rather send them to a certain plane of oblivion, I know. Y you willingly killed people and sent them to the soul cairn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mainly Thalmor. A lot of Thalmor. A lot, a lot of Thalmor. It, it was kind of like a pastime. A, a pastime. Oh, yeah. Made a lot of boots out of them. I don't know why. Apparently, I just like making boots out of Thalmor souls. Really strange. <laughs> you... You did what? Hey, I was a vindictive bastard back then. The guys trapped me, threatened to cut off my head, and then they start sending a whole bunch of assassins after me. I had the dragon chase... I had dragons chasing after me. I had wolves trying to chew on my ass every other step. My horses got killed, and then I have these fuckers coming after me. Not to mention the Dark Brotherhood. Oh, the Dark Brotherhood. They pissed me off so badly. Mm. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Had to... <clears throat> Relived a bit there. But yeah. Yeah, it wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. It was a pain in the righteous ass. Okay. Yeah. Follow that up with constantly having to run everywhere. The werewolf transformations, which really didn't do me a bit of good. Yeah, that reminds me, you, you became a werewolf. Yup. 
How did you unbecome one? Oh, that's simple. I cut off the head of a witch. You you cut off the head of a witch. I cut off the head of a witch. Uh, okay, and then I burned it in the sacred pyres. And drew out my beast spirit. And then I killed my beast spirit. And then I no longer werewolf. Huh? Yes, I know it sounds like a weird acid trip, but I guarantee you it's all true. Okay, what about vampire? You said you were a vampire, right? How did you... Oh, I took a black soul gem from... Well, I took a black soul gem, found a bandit camp, killed the bandit leader, and made him... Made him make me whole again. How? Oh, brought to a... To a... Nice guy, a foreign guy. Or something along that name. And uh, gave it to him. He brought me to a ritual site and uh, used it to purge me vampirism. It was quite interesting, actually. <clears throat> Felt all warm and tingly and sunshiny. Ah, I kind of miss it, though. You do? Well, I guarantee if I was still a vampire, I wouldn't be dead again. But then again, I didn't feel like living off a liquid diet. What they don't tell you about being a vampire lord. Ugh. No, very little solids are involved. Which means your entire intestinal system runs only on liquids. Ugh. Not pretty. Not, not, not pretty. Oh. Good news is you stay thin as hell. Bad news is you're constantly thirsty. I can stand being constantly hungry, but constantly thirsty. You get to a point where you relate your thirst to your hunger, and that's not okay. That, that, that's not okay in the slightest. Like, if I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. If I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Those are very minor nitpicks. Well, that and the sun really royally effed you whenever it was up, which was like half of the day. And whenever I'm literally spending entire months doing shit, I don't feel like hiding for half of my time. I had shit to do and not much time to do it in. So, F that, I'm doing my own shit during my own shit. I'm doing my own shit at my convenience. So, while being a vampire lord was fun, it was a drag. And I didn't really feel like blasting off a dark arrow into the sky and making an eclipse and having everything turn hostile at me. Wait, what? Uh, Ariel Bow, don't worry about it. Anyways. Huh? You're raising more questions than you're answering, he say. Rhea stammers out. It's like, I'm sorry, I can't help it. You're asking for a brief summary. This is not a brief story. <laughs> okay, you're asking about the heart attack. You ain't asking about a detailed reenactment of my entire life or past life. <sighs> okay. It's not like I could just go, hmm, yes, this is what happened, da 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 Because then we'd be here for an entire year and a half. Or at least probably about a good solid 12 weeks, considering all the amount of stuff I'd be able to list in detail before I need to eat and drink. But again, <clears throat> that's the... That's the thing. You asked for one detail about how I wound up getting a heart attack. I'm trying to tell you because there was a lot of factors involved. I mean, hi. Not to mention considering having to deal with the political bullshit going on as well as dealing with uh <clears throat> Just all the ingredients I had to eat. Y eat ingredients? Alchemy ingredients. You ate alchemy ingredients. Yes, Kiba. Yes, Kiba. I had to eat alchemy ingredients. Why did you have to eat alchemy ingredients? How do you think things are learned about? <laughs> you have to experience what they can do. And while I could technically run around the entire world... The entire holds and buy these tiny par pieces of parchment that tell me, 
Ooh, this one's good for making. These two ingredients are good for making such and such, and these two ingredients are good for making this. And these can help me do this. It was quicker just to chow down and figure out what did what later. Which, to be fair, while quicker, also hurt like hell on quite a few occasions. Especially Netch Jelly. Net Netch Jelly? Oh, yeah. Like, ugh. It was helpful in a lot of situations, but it was always painful. Why? Paralysis. You bite into it, first thing your body wants to do is go, <laughs> blap, and just fall straight over. Like, oof. All your muscles tense up to the tightest degree possible, and you just, <laughs> yeah. Worse than poison. A lot worse than poison. Okay, then. Yeah, not really, but hey, it helped me out in a few different situations. How? Well, believe it or not, when your body's super tense and everything like that, and <laughs> combined with heavy armor and such, you could survive a pretty darn good fall. Just like you're a solid, rigid rock yourself just being dropped. Just, <sighs> dunk, 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 dunk. Are you telling me? Yep, I purposely ate the shit whenever I was doing random and crazy crap. <laughs> like one time I was hunting a dragon and decided to... Well... <laughs> I was sneaking up on it, and I got up over the rocks where it was hiding out at, and I jumped on its back, ready to blast it with a volley of arrows at point-blank range right in its neck. And I got close too. I fired one, two, whoo! Oh shit. I got sent farther and farther and farther. Bastard must have threw me like 500 feet. And. Whew, it was not gonna be a pretty landing. Jelly, please! Yeah. Boom! Boom! Bonk, bonk. I survived, but oof, that did not feel right. Took me an entire week to get back to that bastard due to all the other crap I had to go through. Not to mention, he just killed my horse prior, so I had to walk all the way back to him. <sighs> yeah, not fun. Well, I did finally get back to him and faced him the standard way. Why did you try sneaking up on him to begin with? Well, it was a dragon. If I was got been able to sneak up and a kill it, that's a major clout. Or as they would have said, prestige. Back in my day. Your day, you're like, yes, yes, I know. I'm talking about back in the days of Skyrim and such. In Tamriel. Not where we're currently at after a few thousand years of change. Because, yeah, that was fun. Anyways. Back to where I was stating. It just... So much changed. So much was beautiful. Well, uh, I do miss it. About your heart attack. Yes, 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 my bad. Got caught in melancholy. A dragon shouldn't do that. Biggest weakness. But... <sighs> when everything was said and done after Alduin... Harkon, Mirik. The only thing left was nothing. Well, at least until the Ebony Warrior showed up and me and him had a duel at the top of a peak, but that one really stake of the world, that was just something optional. It was like a true warrior facing off against a true warrior. He was a beast. 
I mean one hell of a beast. Oh, our battle was legendary. And I won, but I gave him proper respects and a proper burial. Ugh. But, but, well, when I finally got back home, there was nothing left. I've become thanes of several, of, well, all the holds during that time. You became thane of all holds. How does that, a thane means a champion. It's not a official, you have political prowess in this area. Well, you do, kind of, but you're not hold to one region. You can go off and do other things. It just means you are a champion of that hold. Whenever there were disputes and stuff like that, I would have to pick between the holdings I was with, or if they were siding on the same side, then I would pick along with them against others. But I was a thane of all the holds, had houses and all the lands, built my own houses. You built your own houses? I thought you didn't have... Well, there were times in between the fighting. I mean, heck, it was like about three weeks between Mirak and... Between Harkon and Mirak that I built another one house. And between Alduin and Harkon? It was like a month before any vamp before I got irritated at any vampire cults coming after me. And after Mirak, I just built a house, built the last house I could, and I made it with my family in mind. Had large rooms set up for them on the on the western side. Had a Bakery set had a nice oven and everything set up on the east. Storage room in the back. Blacksmiths in the ba a smithy in the ba basement that the kids weren't allowed to get into until they were much older. That counted as kind of like my own man cave, at least as y'all would put it. It was nice. I was finally at ease. All the stress, the tension, everything that kept me held down had been released. There were still a few responsibilities I had, but it was nothing overly complicated. And hell, if I wanted to, I could have promoted anyone else in the Mages College, the Thieves Guild, or the Companions to take care of it. In fact, I did. I didn't want to be the Harbinger, or the co or the Master Wizard, or the Greatest Thief. I just wanted to be me. Just wanted to relax. And I did. But wait, you said something about the Dark Brotherhood. Fuck those assholes. Uh, they kidnapped me after... Uh, granted, I did murder a woman, but she was a bitch who was abusing orphans. And then I wound up going to Windhelm and figuring out that a guy named... That a kid named Argentino was trying to get her assassinated. I went, hmm, she already did. I kind of broke into his house as part of the Thieves' Guild because I heard there was some good stuff. They were wrong. Well, technically, I did get a silver plate, but... I mean, it wasn't really that great. But it was from a kid, and I went like, Oh, I can't just throw it out. So I kept it with me, but still... Mm -hmm. It wasn't really grand... And then they kidnapped me while I was sleeping. I burnt the bitch. Huh? She tried to get me to kill, like, one of three people that were tied up, gagged, or not gagged, 
had their heads covered up and stuff like that, trying to kill them and take a reward or join them. I went like, bitch, you just stole me away in the middle of the night while I was sleeping. Fuck you. Boom. Not to mention she was stupid enough to leave me with all my weapons and gear. Was that really the brightest thing she could have done? Like, no. Like, all my potions and everything? Like, you're gonna get effed up. You chose violence. I am a master of this. So, so you are the reason, yeah, I'm the reason they died out. But don't you think you would have been better off trying to work with them? Uh, okay, no, if I would have tried working with... <sighs> Let me get this straight. Well, yes, I've heard of their prowess. Well, yes, I've heard of their skill. And well, yes, I've heard of their... Fearsome reputation? They had already sent several assassins after me by this point. They decided to kidnap me in the middle of the night and try and force me to kill innocent people. And, well, people who might have been innocent. And let's not forget the biggest thing she talked down to me. I don't like being talked down to. I really don't. If there's one surefire way to make me angry, it's talking down to me. Oh. Yeah. I was pissed. And so I killed the bitch. And then I went and killed her entire group. But... Most of her entire group. Most? Well, it seemed as if there were two people that were still... Active... But, yes, I killed most of the entire Brotherhood. Anyways, where was I? Right, 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 right. Let's just say... I am not... Not a huge fan... Of being talked down to. But back about the heart attack thing... I just felt at ease, and... Well... It was as if one day when I was eating breakfast, watching the sunrise and over the snow-crested hills, I just felt a sudden tightness in my chest and fell down. That, that was it? Yep. That was pretty much it. I think my heart just finally gave out. After all the bullshit it went through, it went like, ah, finally. A chance to rest. And then it eased up all that tension it was building up, and it went, oh shit, and just... And, yeah, I died. But the th they said the th Who was they? The history teachers, my whole entire... Serana. Serana? Serana. What do you mean, Serana? She knew how much I hated the Thalmor. And she also grew to somewhat dislike them. But she also knew I wouldn't... I would give anything... To make a very big dent against them. So probably having the end, they, she also knows they were greedy bastards. Greedy? Oh yeah, they would take advantage to claim any type of mini of small goal or small victory. So more than likely, once they probably heard that, oh. One of our spe one of us poisoned the dragonborn and killed him. Ha ha! Yes, we did. We did. We did. Yes, we did. They probably all pretty much unanimously like, yes, we will take credit for this. They aren't the smartest people. I mean, they did start the oblivion crisis after all. They did what? Red Mountain. Yeah, that was all they're doing. They tried to collapse the boundaries between Oblivion and, well, 
the actual mortal plane, and in doing so, trying to uplift their ba them into Adra status. By the way, to the guys who are watching, yes, that's actual canon. Now back to the story. So yeah, that is pretty much their entire thing. And then they write a book about how they saved everyone. And da-da-da-da-da. So yeah, they're, they're assholes. Anyways, I'm going to go get some sleep. Uh, if any of y'all want to just talk, wake me up whenever you feel like I need to be woken up, feel free to come into my room and do so. Door will be unlocked. <clears throat> but be warned. I do, but be warned. I am going to be sleeping in the nude. Wait, what? <laughs> As he shuts the door behind him. He seems a lot different. Yeah, he seems a lot cockier. I kind of like it. Akino states. <sighs> Maybe, but he also seems as if he's hiding something. He's hiding several things. Remember, he had the past life of apparently a guy who just went on a shite ton of adventures. We barely scraped the surface of the water tension and... We're already blown away this much. I'd hate to see what he would actually tell us in detail if he were to get detailed. <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, I agree with Issei. Let's go and get some rest. Queen's orders. Right. 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 As they all kind of separate and go home. The next day during school, Rius calls a council meeting. And of course, everyone shows up there as well as Issei. In addition to that, a member of the Riser. Well, I should say, <clears throat> a maid from the Riser household also shows. Issei Fudo. Yeah? You are currently challenged to a duel of honor. Oh. Yes, Issei, Rias interjects. It seems as if you have offended Riser. Oh. So the Kung Pao Chicken wants to get a little bit of revenge against me humiliating him so thoroughly. Well, I'll mind thrashing him again. It, according to him, he says you cheated, and we're somewhat inclined to believe it. Cheated? How'd I cheat? I used my power to beat him. You also called upon help from outside sources. You mean Dernavir? He's technically my summon. It's part of me. Well, granted that may be the case, it's... Also outside help. And to be fair, we do not know how to rule. The council doesn't know how to properly rule on this matter. So there's been a rematch between you and him. A rematch. A rematch. Okay. And what if I refuse? Then the previous arrangement between, well... Miss Grammary and Mr. Riser will be set in stone and you will be, well, punished as a cheater of the games. Uh -huh. And if I lose, same thing will happen. And if I win, then you will be announced a proper victor and the establishment, the uh, previously established deal between the Grimmery and the Riser household will be forfeit. Okay. How long? How long? I'm assuming that he isn't back up to speed just yet after I cut off his arm as well as bloodied him very, very solidly. So I'm assuming he still has some recovery time. 
How long until he's ready to face me? Uh, about three weeks. All right, I accept. Issei! Rius, one moment. I accept, but let him know this. As he gets up and looks her dead in the eyes. I won't be any. Tell him that I will not be anywhere near as gentle as I was the first time. So if he comes, he better be sure to bring his best and heaviest beat stick. Because if he doesn't, it's gonna wind up being shoved up his fundament. His fundament? It's a hole in your body. And it's not your eye, and it's not your ears, or your nose, or your mouth. Anyways, I gotta get some preparation done. So please, I hope you can see yourself out. As she walks, cr creates a portal, and walks right back through it. As Rias is looking at him somewhat shocked... What are you thinking? Rius? This is for you as well as for me. By the way, I'm going to be, uh, please uh, uh, tell the school I'm going to be sick for the next three weeks. Wait, what? Yes, I'm going to be sick for the next three weeks. <clears throat> Where do you think you're going? Training. Training? Yep, training. What do you mean, training? Where are you going? We can train together, not the way I'm going to. Issei! I am the king of this house. I am your superior. You will answer to me. He turns around and walks up right next to her face. As he cups her chin and he says, low looking her dead in the eyes, You saved my life. You granted me power. You showed me respect. Now it's time to see your investment pay off. So... For once, trust me, but trust in me, but I, uh, I'm, you're worried, I know, but the riser doesn't know anything, he hasn't even gotten to see a full hint of my true power. So why don't you sit your pretty little rear down? Go back to taking care of other things. And let this man take care of, well, his personal business. And I promise you, before three weeks is up, I'll be back. I promise. But I promise. Okay. As he lets go of her and walks out the door. As she begins to go, what the hell just happened? Did I just get talked down to? Did I just get... What? As Issei's just kind of going, hmm. Damn. I still got it. <laughs> oh well. Then again, dealing with some of the warrior women in the Companions Guild was always rough. Not to mention uh, some of the students at the college. <laughs> Always had to have a firm hand with them. Anyways, let's see what I can do. As he, well, ignites a spell in his hand and turns invisible before sprouting his demonic wings and flying off. Man, Odaving was right. This is no other way to travel. 
I tell you what, though, he would be pissed to find out that I can fly on my own. <laughs> Granted, the bend will shout could end this and could end this whole affair between me and Riser, but nah, that's too easy, too easy. I don't want to make him a servant. I want to destroy that cocky bastard. But right now, this form's a little bit too weak. As he goes, o flies over towards the mountains. I think it's time for... What do they call it nowadays? Oh, yeah. A training montage. As during the... Well, near three weeks that he's gone... And, believe me, it's, it drags on quite, quite long for, well, the girls and Kiba, wondering about his, bro, worrying about his, well, new bro that just took off, like, holy shit, it's been a while, is he okay? He said he'd be fine. You sure you're okay with this, Rius? I, I'm sure. He'll be fine. He, he always will be. He said he would. Meanwhile, as we cut to Issei, well, he's been doing what we call, doing what they call in Skyrim, grinding. Oh yeah, he's been making a lot of gains. Strength-wise, speed-wise, and crafting-wise. He's been playing a survival game up in the woods. Living, eating, and just doing things on his own. Even made himself his own little crafting station for potions. In which he's taking full advantage of during this three weeks' time. Because, oh boy, it's going to be wicked. As whenever he's finally set up, and it's near time for him to go back, he turns invisible again, loads up his makeshift fur pouch, and, well... As when he comes back, they essentially see him in, well, this get-up. Hello, ladies. Kiba. How's it going? Uh, as when they look at him, he's a bit bigger. And I do mean slightly taller. Muscle is more defined, and, uh, well, obviously, he's got all this crap on, is the first one to say anything, what the hell are you wearing, you crazy weirdo, oh, uh, sorry, Koniko, my, uh, previous clothes didn't fit too well after, uh, couple of weeks of training, so I had to make some new ones of, uh, a few furry friends that decided to drop by while I was sleeping. <laughs> okay. As Asia's kind of looking at this and going, go? Okay, I didn't realize you were the outdoorsy type. Oh, I wasn't. Well, at least not until I remembered who... Well, I was previously. It's weird. Anyways, so, how are y'all doing? Good. How long until the uh, actual fight time? If I'm not mistaken, I'm about a day off, right? Uh, yeah, the scheduled event is in, a f is in another 12 hours. Huh, almost a day off. Alright, well, I need to sleep anyhow. 
Don't, please do not disturb the spy town what you may like the gun show. It is sore and tired and needs some rest. There will be plenty of time for oogling, ogling, and touching if you wish later. Please and thank you. <laughs> Jackass. Love you too, Konako. Love you too. As he walks off. Meanwhile, you know, Rias, I kind of like this new Issei. Oh, you do, Akeno? Yeah, he's a lot more bold and a lot more free with his words, but less, how would we say, wanting to hump your leg like a crazy dog? Yeah. More just exudes this strange confidence in himself. It's actually kind of appealing. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it, it kinda is, and he's not forcing himself on anybody. Granted, the old Issei didn't do that either. True, true, but it makes me think. Is Issei we once knew dead? Or is it, has he all just been replaced by what he remembers? I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Hope you're right. As we cut to about eight hours later... Oh! Hey, Drag, you doing okay? Yeah, I'm fine, partner. Good to hear. Man, those three weeks were hell, weren't they? Yeah. Well, maybe for you. Eh, somewhat. Getting used to you wasn't exactly a walk in the park, you know. Especially when I found out there's a fucking dragon living in my arm. Like, well, living in... Well, actually now living in my arm. That makes more sense. By the way, why did you agree to that? Well, to be honest, don't know myself. Partially because I like using healing magic without feeling as if my entire blood vessels are going to burst from the seams. Man, partially because, well, I kind of wanted to talk with you more. And having you locked away inside of a gauntlet that can appear and disappear at will just seems a bit restrictive. So, part of it's because you want to use your arm to cast holy power. Bingo. And part of it is because of pity. Bingo! <sighs> I do not know where I feel insulted or happy. Mmm, -hmm. just feel you, man. I ain't gonna say shit. After all, you're you. You're your own individual. Uh, fair point. Oh, oh back pop. <sighs> Anyways... I've been wanting to know, what, whenever I pop my knuckles, do you feel that, or is it just like, just some audible noise? Uh, it's a bit of both. Hmm. Interesting. Anyways, I think it's time we get ready. After all, Riser's gonna be here any moment. And I don't want to keep him longer than needed. <laughs> You're getting creepy. Yeah, well, that fucker started it. And I'm ready to rock. Alright. As Issei dons his, well, newly bought clothing, he goes, Oh, a gift from Riesh, I know it. You cannot show up to a proper function looking like a barbaric bastard. Wear some proper clothes. <sighs> ah, I like her. She's spicy. <laughs> ah, Sharon, then again, she's always been spicy. <laughs> ah, as he gets properly suited up... And they take the train to the underworld. For all to see as, well, an entire listing of nobles is there. As they 
Main event is getting ready to be kicked off. So, you got a whole crowd for us today, eh, Riser? <laughs> yeah. A whole crowd to watch your defeat. Oh. I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you forget how we last ended up? You cheated, you bastard. Oh? Well, you know what? Fine. Fine. Is there anything you want to eliminate from my arsenal so we can have a quote-unquote fair fight? Yeah. No summoning that dragon. Okay. No conjuring those ethereal weapons that carve into the soul. Fine with me. Anything else? Anything else? Nah, that should be good. Alright, you're a bit of an idiot, but alright. I'll tell you what, Riser. Why don't we raise the stakes a little bit? Raise the stakes? Oh yeah, you see, I'm feeling quite generous with you. Quite, quite generous with you. Alright, what do you want? Well, for all to hear, first... Let us let them hear our conversation as the girls are getting set up in the stands and suddenly their private conversation becomes a bit more audible for everyone to hear. So here's the idea. Here's the idea. Five minutes. Five minutes? Oh yeah. If you can outlast me for five minutes, outlast my sheer prowess for five minutes you win <clears throat> as everyone begins to kind of chuckle and gasp and somewhat roll their eyes thinking this upstart's a bit cocky not have seen as most of them didn't even bother watching the games as the ones who did realize he's got something up his sleeve oh uh -oh. And what if you lose? Simple. If I lose, and now you can, and if you beat me before five minutes is up, or if you are able to outlast me for longer than five minutes, I will swear my undying loyalty to you. Oh? Yes. If I survive, you can, ha you can have me as your personal slave. To do with as you wish. <sighs> oh. Well, aren't you cocky? Oh, but you didn't hear what happens if I win. Oh, and what do you win? Simple. If I win, the Grimmery household gets access to those tears when and whenever we want. No questions asked. Oh. So that's how you're going to play. I'm sure you can see the advantages you would have against someone who can use magics the way I can. Very true, very true. Very well. You have yourself a deal, as Rius is kind of sweating a little bit, going, I didn't say anything about that. When does the five minutes start? Mul Quadiv. As with that one phrase, a bright, translucent, orange energy forms and shapes around Issei, wrapping around his body, coating him in mystical property. Sorry, got interrupted. Mystical properties. As... <laughs> well, whenever it's done shaping, resembles that of a dragon hide. 
as if scales of draconic energy are coating his entire frame. It starts now. Fusrata! As with that one shout, a large bellowing force of energy sends Riser catapulting across his arena, impacting the ground with such fervor as it leaves dents and craters with each and every skip, as if he was a stone on water. Except, what he's landing on is much, much harder. <clears throat> Bastard! That was cheeky! Yeah, well, you tried to challenge me after getting your ass whooped once. You know what I am, for I told you. I am the Tovakin, the Dragonborn, the Quinarin, and you think it would be easy facing me. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna teach you a very valuable lesson, boy. No one gets the upper hand on me. As he pulls three bottles out of his back pocket, each one being locked in between a set of fingers. As he plucks the corks on all three of them and pours them from a height of about six inches above his head as all the fluid is pour straight down his gullet and a bright luminescent aura of energy wraps around him for the briefest of moments drag just like we practiced right as he clenches his fist <laughs> and summons a tiny yellow sphere. <sighs> Bastard! Die! As Riser gets up, slinging forth billowing, billowing, well, fonts of fire and brimstone towards Issei. As all he does is set up a ward and absorb it as he focuses his energy on this tiny sphere in his hands. What the hell's going on? However, someone in the stands knows perfectly well what's going on. Someone in the stands has seen all of this before in one shape, way, or form. I don't believe it. It really is him still using the same old tactics, just with a little bit of imp new improvisation. <laughs> Give them hell, darling. <sighs> hey, Riser. Hmm? Haven't you ever wondered why potions are so grand? What are you talking about? Potions aren't potions are worthless, not even worth the time and effort it takes to make them. As the wards cut off and Issei lunges forward as you hear BOOST Huh? What the BOOM As Riser gets kicked in the gut, sending him flying straight in the air, and as he begins to descend, merely catching himself fifty feet and above before he is met again with a loud THUNG of Issei slamming into him with a flying fist uppercut. Worthless. Not worth the time it takes to make them. Is that including your own phoenix tears? A shame you'd say that about yourself. Shut up. No potion can compare to my tears of the phoenix. Hmm. Maybe. Or maybe you just don't know how to properly make them. The three potions I just drank. Fortify destruction. 
Huh? What? <laughs> Fortify Magica. Fortify Restoration. Hmm? What? 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 <laughs> in other words, I've been saving this up with you in mind. Boost! 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 Transfer. Let me show you a taste of the power of the Dragonborn. Sunfire Bolt! <laughs> as he launches this tiny sphere, but as it's let go from his grasp, it's a blur. Something traveling at speeds that cannot even be grasped by the most powerful of demon there. As Riser can't even dodge it, but can only feel the sudden distinctive pain and searing of his own flesh as it burrows straight through his shoulder, searing and tearing any ligament and bone that gets in its way in a quick, precise motion as it explodes, blasting off his arm, leaving nothing but a large, seared gap. <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Holy magic. Oh yeah. <sighs> you see, I found out something while I was training. It turns out this demon body of mine is a lot sturdier than my old Nordic one. So I'm able to push it a lot harder and faster than I could previously. But I couldn't use my restoration spells. Something about the holy magic not blending in right. Wanting to bubble and boil the blood veins underneath. It was a miracle that I was able to pull off what I did back with you before, without feeling too much pain in the trials. But I guess that was just due to the sheer amount of hatred I had going through my veins at that time. Oh, oh, bastard. Oh, I know I am. But the funny thing is... As he impacts Riser dead in the head... Sending him rocketing upwards yet again. As he goes, Your Shazur! As a large ball of fire is launched forth, impacting Riser, sending him flying back into the barrier of his own stands. <sighs> That didn't hurt. It wasn't meant to. I know you're resistant to fire. That's why I chose your Shazul. But you see... By giving a bit of my arm to the drag... By giving my arm to the dragon... I found a loophole. It's fun whenever you're able to find a loophole. Isn't it? Here... Let me show you a few other odds and ends I can do with it. Boost. 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 No. What are you? As he grips his own throat. Transfer. <laughs> now. <sighs> Foos. Roll. As an even more powerful guttural blast launches forward, empowered by the dragon aspect, and boosted by the dra by, well, the boosted gear. It impacts Riser with the force equivalent to that of, well, a category a category ten tornado. 
Except, instead of it being displaced over a mile, over over a five mile tall windstorm, it's then about the central mass of a truck. Needless to say, Riser's body is slammed against the barrier with such force that the barrier shatters, leaving nothing but a gory mess which was his torso. As his limbs break apart and fall on the ground, including his head rolling over to Issei. As all he does is step on it and crunch it beneath his heel. Hmm. Mushy. <laughs> this is what happens when you face the Dovahkiin. This is what happens when you face me. Rise or Phoenix can't beat me. If anyone else wishes to test my might, then please do so. I'll be more than happy to oblige. As he begins to walk away, he hears a distinct whooshing sound of fire. What the hell? As Riser's body begins to, well, recongregate itself. What the actual fuck? I thought that would kill him for sure. Then again, maybe holy magic is the only way to kill him. Oh well, you ready, Drag? Getting another boost ready. Hmm? As he makes another sunfire bolt, and as Riser is inevitably brought back into a mostly full corporeal form, as his arm is still missing this time. Hmm. So by doing that with this, I was actually able to break it off permanently. Maybe. Then again, I thought I broke it off permanently with the soul, with the bound blade. Why is he cowering? As he looks back at Riser from his mental thought, Riser is indeed cowering. Going, maybe I went a little too far. I, I yield. I yield. I yield. I yield. I yield. As Riser is legitimately cowering in fear. I yield. Please. Please, no more. No more. No more. I never want to do that again. No more. No more. Mm. Mm. As, well... Uh, well, I guess I claim victory. Mm. As he begins to walk away. You say just as, okay, I, I win, I guess. Not expected, but, hmm. I didn't expect to win this way. I thought the Fusro Da killed him, but uh, I'll take a surrender, I guess. He kind of looks over his shoulder again, considering he's heard this surrender bit a few times before from bandits. But Riser's still in the corner, just kind of rocking back and forth, just going, hmm. He's smarter than most of the bandits in Skyrim. All right. <laughs> that makes... Huh. All right. I feel f I'm fine with this. As eventually, he just... gets back to where Rias and them were. As it's only been about two and a half minutes. And his dragon aspect is still glowing. And shimmering and shining. Well, did y'all see? <clears throat> How the hell did you... When did you... Pretty shiny. Yes, uh... Akino. Pretty shi... Yes, uh, Akino. Very shiny. As Konako is just kind of... Poking... The general torso, trying to poke the aspect part of the dragon aspect and kind of feeling it all over. Hey, stop. That tickles. That tickles. Stop. Stop. Stop tickling me. 
As she just kind of grabs the horns on top of his head as he's picking her up. Just like, you are not listening to a word I'm fucking saying, are you? <sighs> Fine, you can play. As he just drapes her over the back of his over his back, it just goes, eh, can't beat him, join him. Might as well just endure it. Okay, so, uh, yeah, this is going to be going on for about another two and a half minutes, so, sorry. Two and a half minutes? Dragon Aspect. Can't really, uh, turn it off once it's on. It, it It's kind of like, uh, well, it, it's kind of hard to explain. As another voice peak is heard over the, well, heard from a slight distance away. Yes, it's essentially like a present that's once unwrapped, can't be put back until you've, well, ogled it just the right amount. Wait a minute. I know that voice. Serana? Hi. It's been quite a while. Serana! Holy crap! As he runs up and hugs her tight and everything. Indeed. It has been a while, hasn't it, champ? Stop calling me that. It's been... What, a few thousand years now, and I'm still older than you. Shut up! Especially now, you're even younger than you were before. Technically speaking, I'm technically older than I was before. No, not physically. <clears throat> Don't do this now, Serana. As he just kind of playfully swipes her away like, Stop it! Stop it! As Rius gets up and goes, uh, you, who are, ah, uh, my apologies. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Sorana Volkihar. And, well, I'm an old compatriot of our, acquaint, of your acquaintance. He's, he's not my acquaintance. Oh, believe me, dear. With as much as you probably know about him, he is an acquaintance to you. Uh, Sharana, no, no need to be hostile. She saved my life. She, she saved your life. From? Fallen Angel. Oh yeah, I forgot those were a thing. Oh, well, and... What did she ask in return for you saving, for her saving your life? Uh, nothing. Nothing. If I'm not mistaken, you're a demon now, right? I mean, yeah. Mm hmm. Which means you serve a house, right? I mean, I do serve her house. So she did ask something for your life. She didn't save it for nothing. And I'm pretty sure she was watching you the entire time. She could have stepped in and actually saved your life at any moment, but chose to let you die so that you could be a servant of hers. Now, uh, Serana, there's no need to go that far. It's a common ploy, Issei. What? Enough of that. We'll talk more over dinner later. D dinner? Din uh, I'm actually not all that... I actually don't need to worry about that. Huh? What do you mean? I'm trying to eat a lot healthier now. Okay, I understand. We can have some healthier food set up. Oh, no need. I got my own. Well, technically speaking. What do you mean you have your own? As from his hands, a green aura appears before a cabbage comes out of it. Wait, what the fuck? The fuck? The fuck? What? I figured I got bored in the forest after like 
week one, I got tired of just scrounging around. So I made a new spell. To summon cabbage. Well, vegetables in general, but uh, I like cabbages. <laughs> I'm covered on the food department. At least get it cooked. Follow me. I swear you never change. Hey, hold up there now. He's not going anywhere with you, crazy vampire lady. Hey, 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 hey. She's not, she's not crazy. She's genius. She's not crazy. And I'm, I'm pretty sure she just wants to talk. She's an old friend. She's been with me for a while. And she's probably just... It's catching up with old times. Uh-huh. Like, I'm going to ignore ignore her previous comments, Issei. I, um, okay, 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 okay. Can they come to dinner with us? You know that's very rude to invite other women along on a, on a date, Issei. Or should I say Izmir? Izgramor. As she gets a bit closer and such. <clears throat> It's not a date. We're just getting to re-know each other. And these are the people who I do owe. And I'd appreciate it if you weren't hostile towards them. Fine, fine. I'll show you the information I have after we get you some proper food. For now, come along. As a black portal opens up. Really? Cabbages? Uh, yes, I like cabbages. And with that, I end the episode here. Hope y'all enjoyed, and have fun.